That's right. But what did you do for your, you went camping, right? I went camping. I, had, I went to, was it fun? I had a great time. We took the van you know, out into the woods and just hung out for a couple of days. Had nice. perfect weather. Saw one mosquito the whole time. Um, you know, it was it was pretty good. We did all get stung by bees, but that's a different story. The good news is we're not allergic. So um uh, wasn't that big of a deal. But it's getting that time of year up here in Minnesota where it's starting to get a little chilly at night. It was I was in Seattle and it was cold at night. Um I was a little chilly. I went to PAX West. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, new coffee mug. Um, yeah, and it was definitely cold at night. Well, cold for you is different than cold for me. Yeah, it was bearable. So it was probably about 65, I think. Nice. I didn't have a jacket or anything because it's like it's not going to be cold up there. Yeah, but they get that moist sea air, which mm -hmm. can mess with all sorts of things. But very cool. Yeah, I haven't been to Seattle. I don't know why. I've been thinking about road tripping out west. It was my first time. It was nice. We went down to that marketplace. The Pike, Pike Place Pikes, Market. There, that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah, that was pretty cool. We should have spent more time down there than at PAX. PAX was pretty lame this year. Did you go uh, to the Starbucks? I went past that. I didn't go in it. I have a picture of it. It's on my Usually phone. pretty busy. Yeah, the line get, was like out the door. I'm like, I can get the same Starbucks somewhere else. Right. Um, but yeah, it's first a, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. It's all the gum wall. Oh, gross. I feel like they have a gum wall somewhere else too, though. Let me see. Yeah. This is the first Starbucks, I guess, right here. There's a line for it and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, See, yeah. once we Anyways. get new cameras. I know. It won't focus. Um, yeah, the gum wall is pretty cool. I was just wondering when I got there, like, who was the first person that put their piece of gum there? Right. And what if why? that person feels guilt? <laughs> and what why? Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone's messaging me today. It's great coming back from vacation. Right. I got to go to Houston for two weeks. So what? That'll be. Oh, that's right. For, you're for there work. for two weeks, but you're flying back on the weekends, right? Yeah. So that'll be email. Is this something hotel you talk room about? Email nightmare. What? <laughs> Is this something you talk about? I don't know. Maybe on-site training for civil 3D and auto. Okay, so it's training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody who's joined us early. This is where we just normally just talk about whatever, and then we'll get started at uh, the 30-minute mark for sure. Um, did you sign up for XCon? I did not. I need to too. For everyone listening in, XCon is coming up. It's not in person this year. Yeah, and it, this in-person con, like that, because PAX is a con, right? It's it's for um video games. Right. Um is dead. They Just didn't because have of COVID or what? Um, they had more indie style games there than major brands. There wasn't Microsoft. There wasn't like Bungie. Hmm. Um, there wasn't Logitech. Usually, is there? 
I don't know because it's my first PAX ever, but that's my my uh, friends that I went there with were talking but isn't about. Is Bungie like in Seattle? Isn't that where they're based? Yeah. Yep. Um, it was. I think one of those the things where they're you know the whole COVID scenario of how do we force our employees to go to a convention? <laughs> yeah, it is. Getting a little weird out there. So yeah, there was no one really there. Oh, it's a bummer. Still nice to get out of town. Right? It was. It was refreshing. Different scenery is always welcome. Hmm. Yeah, and it's green out there. And it's cool. And it's not cool here. It's 106, you know. Still. Gross. Yeah, I know. Still 106. Let me see. I think it finally starts to turn the corner. Actually, probably not. It's probably not till the end of the month. Let's see. 106. Oh, yeah. We stop hundreds in on Friday, but it, that's happened before. Not this Friday. The next Friday. Ooh. Because it goes tomorrow 108, Friday 106, Saturday 106. Sunday 109, Monday 108. Oh, gross. You miss it? It's 64 right now. <laughs> Air quality is excellent. Light wind. Yeah. We do have a 87 in the forecast. Otherwise, nothing above 80. Everything else is all 71, 73, 74. Just perfect. One warm day left. But the loaves are starting to hit the the load tonight will be 48 so it's coming yeah and we don't usually hit cold nights until halloween because mm. that's when i remember i always had to put the jacket on yep oh, it'll start cooling off here and the leaves will start changing and then here it goes because i remember last year the most snowfall we got all year was in october we got like eight inches of snow in october and then the rest of the winter was pretty pretty lame I'm thinking but, it's going to be a good snow year this year. Hoping. I hope so. Especially for us in our drought. I mean, this is the first time I know, and for a fact, in Tucson, we've had this much rain. And oh, I forget the stat, what the stat was. Um, I know we had more than the Pacific Northwest had this year rain. We had more rain. I'm okay with. It's not a bad rain. Right. If you open up review and go to check for updates, what happened? I didn't update. I didn't either, but now I'm getting an unable to connect message. Same. So that must, their server must be down. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I have the release notes, though, don't you? Yep. Yeah. That's good enough. Where? I don't usually download it for a couple of days after. Probably should have before I left. Well, I, or sometimes those file sizes are this large, too. I think this one was. It was like 9 point, nine, like 900 megs or something. 928? 928? giant all right we are two minutes away still waiting for our dj cj to come in is she coming in today do we know i thought she was out oh i don't know are we not going live on youtube not on this coast i don't believe good to know You can't hear that bucket getting hit, right? It's just. I cannot hear anything. Okay. Is it going to bug you? Is that something <laughs> you need to go take care of? You got one minute. <laughs> it. I'm pretty sure my. 
Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. It, there, it's done. My, my grass only runs for like 15 minutes. Good deal. I mean, we could wait a couple more minutes. Should we ping her? Do you want to ping her? Yep, got it. I just asked her if she's in the office. What? I just asked her if she's in the office or not. Okay. Is her, is her uh, icon green? It's green, but it's the box. Oh, yeah. Dot. Yeah, she ain't, she's not there. Oh, well, we are we'll recording. There we go. We'll go ahead and get started then. Check us off, Michael. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Chave here with Jason Artley, and we're here to talk about all things Blue Bean. Um, any questions related to that? What's our topic today, sir? We're going to talk about updates and maintenance and drawings and why it's a good thing to do. Oh, that's right. So we're going to be talking about all things in terms of updates, which we just had, was just released. Um, and then we will talk about the enterprise licensing structure and why would we get enterprise? Why do we need it? Um, what is the purpose of it? Uh, sorry, maintenance. Not enterprise maintenance. Well, man, enterprise is part of that too. We can look at licensing structures and, and help people decide what's the best fit for their organization because these questions come up all the time. And it's something that we've touched on in little bits and pieces um, throughout our morning coffee review series, but we haven't done an episode like focused on maintenance and licensing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yep. And this all was kicked off because if you've opened up review in the past week or so, you probably noticed an update box if you are currently on maintenance. And that update box tells you, hey, there's a new version available. Um, now, this morning, oddly enough, the Bluebeam server is disconnected for whatever reason. But we can still see what is available. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay. And at any time, you can come up to help here in review and go to learn what's new. So this is our uh, sort of portal that tells us all the things that have been updated with review. Of I course, actually didn't know that was there. You can always go to check for updates. So check for updates. This is where it would pop up, say, hey, look, 20.2.50 is available. But unfortunately, today the server is down. Um, and I didn't update already. I'm still in review 20.2.40. So you can see that here. I'll do that again go up to review and then about you can see what version you're in currently so i'm in version 20.2.40 so this is officially out of date and if i scroll down on the what's new i can see everything that was fixed in the version that i have currently right so they've added um, updated supports they fixed some bugs they've corrected some things they're making the software better and that's exactly what's happening in this 20.2.50 so they're talking about you know, they fixed the SharePoint ex extension issue. This SharePoint comes up a lot when it comes mm -hmm. to Bluebeam review. And here they're fixing some of those things to make them soft, make those two pieces of software work better together. They also fixed an issue where converting an Outlook email to PDF was displaying an error message. I never was had that happen. I you, was. I was actually, yeah, I was just working with a client about how to best export out archived emails specific to the job. And there was a bug where you, when, I think it was creating um, selected folders because you can create a folder structure mm -hmm. and then you create PDFs into there. Now be aware, and this is something we can talk about down the line, when you're creating a PDF just out of the box, when uh, review plugin is installed, it's creating a PDF package, which is proprietary to Bluebeam. Um, you can change that so it's a singular PDF. That way you have the ability to overwrite an existing one or append an existing one. Um, that's the only way you could do that. Otherwise, if you're doing this PDF package and you're trying to update, say another email comes through, you're trying to update that subsequence of folders and files, you can't do it with the PDF package. You have to create a whole new PDF package for it. 
So just be aware of that. That's something we can go over if, again at the end of any of these sessions. You have the ability to leave a comment um, and ask what you would like to see before. Or guess what? Our things we're going to be talking about today aren't going to take the full time. We did it intentionally today so that anyone here can ask any questions they want. If you want to ask questions about that, we can talk about it. Absolutely. So um, I see a lot of new names on our attendees list, and I want to thank you all for coming to Morning Coffee Review, our West Coast edition. Hopefully this time slot um, is a little bit more accessible to, to some of you who don't have to get up so early. But uh, these sessions are all about you, the Bluebeam community. So if you have any questions at all, whether or not they're related to maintenance and updates, as we're talking about today, feel free to type them in the Q&A panel, and we'll answer those when we have time. Yep. Let's keep looking at this. Uh, release notes. How do you get access to these updates, Michael? You have to be on active maintenance. So anything that requires R&D like this, right? Someone has to go in and fix things, research and discovery, all that good stuff. Um, it, you have to pay for this. It's a subscription-based licensing structure. Uh, the one thing I really love about Bluebeam is the ability to have a license for a software be perpetual. So you own review when you purchase it from us or well, through us, through Bluebeam, right? The software, but, or another reseller. But talking about that in terms of you have to pay for maintenance, which is a subscription part of it to get updates. So when you buy a review, you can just purchase this out, right? Whatever version you were latest at at that time point purchasing it. But if you want to actually have updates, you have to have maintenance. And someone asked, do we get coffee today? LOL. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be picking from the best question asked who uh, will be getting the coffee. Because we did say that in our last session. But it, the, today, the way to get it would be answering that question. Asking, asking, asking the, question. the best question. All right, so that maintenance thing, there's a cost, as you mentioned, and that cost depends, it fluctuates depending on the level of review that you have, right? So the retail pricing of these are $99 a year on top of your perpetual licenses, right? So if you were just buy review, $349, it's yours forever, but you don't get updates. So you won't get those little pop-ups. You're not going to get, uh, you get what you get, essentially. <laughs> so if you were to download it today, you get 20.2.50, and hopefully that's good enough, right? The software is amazing. You know, we're, we're never going to talk bad about it um, because it's not bad software, but it's still software, right? Nothing's perfect because everybody's organization is different. Some people are using SharePoint, some people use Outlook, some people use this, whatever. And a lot of these updates are making the software more accessible to everybody. And with that comes, you know, not just the bug fixes, but enhancements. There's been some great things that have come up through these little little feature updates, right? So if you've got standard, you're looking at 100 bucks a year. If you're looking at CAD version, you're 120. And if you've got extreme, it's 149. Retail. Be, yeah, and be aware, for, that's retail. <laughs> and also be aware that this is cheaper than DC Pro. So if you folks are using DC Pro out there, um, you are paying less in terms of which version you're getting, right? But you are paying less for what you're already paying for, essentially. Absolutely. So when we start talking about um, enterprise, so includes your perpetual license and maintenance. So this is where the different licensing uh, actually affects your ability to make these updates, right? So perpetual, has to be your subscription. Your um, enterprise includes maintenance and enterprise. Well, yeah, license, that's kind of worded but weird. You still you have to, have have to subscribe. Yeah. So it's like you can't have this without this. You can have this without this. Does that make sense? Hence why that line is dotted. And then when we get to an open license, so this is better for larger firms um, or actually. Any size firm, let's say more than 10 people, right? More than 10 people, you can use this open license. This includes the maintenance, and that's all wrapped into that retail cost there. So this is an annual subscription. There's no perpetual component. So if you're 
looking at getting review for your organization, you can certainly reach out to us and we can walk you through these different options and help you decide which is best for you. It all depends on how much you're going to use it. You know, the, the, if you buy it and then you get trained on it, you're going to use it more often, right? It's, it won't be one of those things that people ignore. Um, or it's going to be one of those things that you can't live without. And maybe you've got a ton of people there. You've got a little bit of turnover just because that's how things go. Maybe enterprise is the best way for that. So again, we can help you decide. Yep. Maintenance also gets you access to having the ability for support through Bluebeams. Uh, but you automatically, if we are your reseller, gets support as well for the software that you're purchasing. Um, so just be aware of that. You also get access to drawings if you have purchase maintenance, um, which allows you to then go through, which we'll talk about in a second. So what are the perks? And then we'll also talk about the perks for enterprise. We'll show you a little bit of the enterprise licensing structure as well. What are we going through here? I was just trying to get uh, drawings. Oh, okay. Up. But uh, yeah, so these updates that have come out, this one just popped up, uh, let's see, last Tuesday, 20.2.50. So it's got new stuff. I have not updated to this one yet. Michael has not updated to this one yet. Um, we are talking about this earlier before we got started. Um, as with most software, depends on the, actually I would say, depends on the software. Sometimes I'm quick to update day of. As soon as I get that notification, I'm hitting hit and go. But I tend to be waiting like a week these days. I wait, wait for a week. If there's something in here that definitely fixed an issue that I was having, again, check the release notes. Go over to here to help learn what's new before you update. The update will pop up and show you these things too. So if it is something that like, oh, hey, this will, fix my, this will make my life better, go ahead and update right away. Otherwise, I like to wait a week just because sometimes, um, sometimes maybe they've added to something else, right? I think there was an update earlier this year where it was like they had an update like a week after. Yeah, and also you notice bigger go. feature updates in the point number additions. So usually it's bug fixes in point one, point something, that's like a bug fix, versus point two, that's an actual feature update as well. That's something we've noticed. So see how it goes point one, point one, point one, and then it goes like point one with an addition. Yeah. Then two, like those point additions, those are more feature updates. But when it does the point three, that'll be, I mean, those are more of the bug fixes. Point three would be more of a feature update. Good deal. So all sorts of updates, basically once a month, May, July, August. So we missed June in there, but there's still a lot of updates that are coming through, which is, which is pretty great, right? I always like to see that my software is evolving and, and getting better and responding. So this, uh, what's new actually goes way, way back, goes all the way back to the beginning. Um, this is handy if you're deciding like, hey, I'm stuck on 2018. Is it worth it for me to, to update to a new version? You can go take a look at these re release notes and it will show you exactly what you're missing out on. Um, because some people will say, hey, you know, this is good enough for me. It does what I need it to do. That's fine. But other people cannot live without the new stuff. So go take a look at the release notes. All right. Any um, any other comments about updates? Michael? No. All right. No comments coming through. Just uh, Jordan asked about that free coffee and then he took off. <laughs> um, we are doing prizes today. So for the best question asked, so feel free, again, at any point to ask any questions, we do have a title and an outline to go through. Um, that's really just for us to fill in the dead time. So feel free to ask any questions you have pertaining to anything Bluebeam. Yep, good deal. All right, let me move some windows around here. All right, so we looked at the release notes, shows you what's new. Give me a second. See, for me, it's later in the day. My coffee's run out. My throat's dry. For me, it's beginning of the day, and my coffee's fresh. Lucky. All right. Do you want to talk about drawings? 
Yeah, let me bring that up here. One second. Didn't get the mute button fast enough. Uh, drawings. For some reason, all my search is gone from my things here. So to get access to drawings, you have to have active maintenance. Now, let me restate that in a better format because you can get access to drawings on any mobile device for free. You do not have to have a license of maintenance or review to get access to drawings. But in order for you to be an uploader of drawings to drawings, if you need clarity on that, <laughs> please restate that, I will. Um, you need to have active maintenance on your licensing structure. That way you can upload drawings. Now, where do these drawings come from? They can come through two different areas. So they can come from your studio projects, which is a feature in review, it's studio. So studio projects, you could have the ability to access from the projects or you upload them directly from your device. So in order to get into there, you have to have a Bluebeam ID, which is the same thing you log into Studio, same thing you log into your gateway portal. Um, if you have Studio Prime, that's what you log into there as well. All of your, all of your um, login information is through your Bluebeam ID. So I'm gonna log in here. Then I have access to drawings. You can log into this right now too. It's drawings.bluebeam.com. When you come into here though, you will see your studio projects. So here are all of my studio projects that I can view. Now, none of these have uploaded ones except for one of my projects. If I clicked on a project and I just wanted to see what's happening here, like this project file for Dynamo here, there are no sheets in there because no one has uploaded them, right? Yes, you're probably like, hey, Mike, well, I have them all in my studio project. Why don't I see them here? They don't automatically update into here. They have to be uploaded into the sets of your sheets for the drawing it's specifically in. So I go to my file share here, which I have a ton in that project that I've uploaded. You will see them in here. Now, if you've been invited to a project, someone else is uploading them, you'll be able to see them. Drawings is specifically meant for easy access to viewing PDFs in the field. That's what it was built for. That's what it was meant for, not marking up PDFs. So if we are having an outside workflow where we're trying to mark up PDFs in the field, that's when we would use Studio Sessions, which we do have in later versions of our morning cough reviews demonstrating that workflow. Now, if you do have any questions about that workflow, we can show you now. Again, this is all about you, the community. So feel free to ask any questions you have about Bluebeam. Okay, so back into here though, you will have this upload area here when you have active maintenance. Now, if you still do not see it and you're like, hey, I have active maintenance, what's going on? Folks, you can log into your gateway. Your gateway is your same email you use to purchase your license under. So your admin will have access to your gateway. Then you need to add uploaders. That way then people can upload those drawings. Not everyone automatically gets this upload feature. You have to enable it. And that is in your gateway, which also gives you access to your enterprise licensing structure, which is around $10 a year per license to give you access to this management portal of your licenses. So instead of, well, I guess, maybe all of those folks here or some of our folks here have an Excel sheet, which has the license, the computer, the serial number, whichever, they're doing for their structure of how they're managing their licenses, um, we can alleviate that pain with $10 a year on their license per license, and we could see it in a more digestible manner, and I'll show you that in a second. But are there any questions about drawings in here? Not seeing anything in the chat. Okay, let me I try to fix my chat here. So I'll ask a question though. Okay. So you've got in this project, in this drawing set that you have up there, you have things that are published and then you have a for review tab that has a notification there. Um, what's that all about? So the for review area, once you upload a set, right? So I can upload from a project, which is my studio project or from my computer, you decide, let me hit cancel here. 
Then it gets processed by Bluebeam. From there, you'll then have the review area. Hey, this is waiting for you to process because you need to give it some additional information. Like, is the sheet number, excuse me, correct? Is the sheet title correct? Is the discipline or the issue date or revision all updated in here? Because it's going to go through and try to find that data and then upload it into here. Now, I know this is a 3D PDF, which doesn't work with drawings, by the way. So 3D PDFs do not work in drawings. That's why it's having an issue and I don't see any preview. But you will be able to see previews when you select on something that isn't. Oops, I selected on the same one. I can't believe that. You will be able to see a preview of them and the date or the numbers are going to pretty much autofill for what you have. If the data is a vector PDF, not a raster PDF. I did see a question come through. Do you want to read that or do yep. you want me to read that? We'll, we'll answer that in a minute. Okay. And then once you're done, you have the ability to publish it. And that's when it will be sent out to mobile devices. Well, it's not sent out to mobile devices. It's sent out to the cloud area of where this is. And then you'll be pinged once you connect back to the internet. Hey, there's an update. Do you want to download the set? It's extremely fast. All of your hyperlinks work in here as well. So if you have any hyperlinks that are bringing you to and from with section cuts, those all still work in drawings. It can be downloaded on I, I, iOS. I was going to say ISO. <laughs> iOS devices or Android. That's the great thing about it, right? Most people have an Android nowadays. Even if you have an old iOS, you can still download drawings onto that mobile device, and then they can access these PDFs out in the field rather than having paper printed sets that are going to get wet or just the expense of having paper sets as well. Um, they can have this free app. You publish these sets. They're always going to have the up-to-date one because it's going to prompt them to download that when they reconnect to the internet. They do not need internet when they're out in the field because they will have downloaded that set before. I've been using drawings just to demonstrate it more often because it is super handy just to have that one central app on the phone, on your device, go to drawings, see what you need to see. As long as you've got an internet connection, you've got access to, to view things. So it works really well instead of having to dig through emails and figure out which one was most recent and all that other stuff. Um, it It is pretty impressive considering that it's free, right? Yep. And you only get access to this button though as an uploader if you have active maintenance on your license. That's correct. So do you wanna go forward or do we wanna answer the question? Well, this question, uh, it's a very good question, but it's relating to profiles. So not exactly related to drawings. So if there are any, any questions about drawings, otherwise we will move on and talk about um, this thing. All right. So let's go take a look. So Mark asked, uh, this question is difficult to describe. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about at the moment. Perfect. That's the type of stuff we love. We will go down rabbit holes all day long. Don't even worry about staying on topic. So the question is, we want to have a single location where we can save a corporate user profile in tool chests. That way, when they are updated, everyone gets the updates. We save the files in a single location on the network. We went through the arduous task of importing each toolbox and deselecting relative path option so that the toolbox is not recreated and saved on the workstation, which is annoying. Agreed. This approach seems to work okay, but is there a more efficient way to set this up? I understand this may be a more involved question to answer on this venue. Challenge accepted for the most part, right? Um, we're talking about setting up a profile and having it be on the network instead of on your C drive. So it's as easy as exporting and connecting, right? Didn't we have this conversation once before, Michael, where we even made it read only for everybody? We did because we wanted to lock the tool chest because you can update the tool chest wherever the location is once it's brought in. Now, the easier process, honestly, would just be the reloading of the profile because the tool chest would come with it because you're doing two separate ones because you can export out your profiles. The only thing with that, though, is if I do hit save, is it going to ping back? That would be the testing. 
because when you save profile, you also have when you exported it out somewhere, it included the dependencies. So wherever that was located, because your tool sets, right, reside in your specific profile that you're in, unless you hit all profiles. But once you hit save, it, the metadata for it saves to the profile. So you theoretically, if you did it in this manner where you saved this down, or you went to manage and export it out, or you saved it to a specific location, all the dependencies are gonna be there. So when you hit save for the profile after you've updated your tool set, so you don't have to export these out individually or save them individually here, everything would update in that location. That way you're not doing two exports or two saves, right? Cause you're doing your tool chest, your tool sets saves. Your tool chest is what holds your tool sets. Just a little verbiage there. Um, and then your profile save, right? You could just do the one versus the other. Yep. Does that answer the question mark or help make it a little easier? What is going on with my Zoom chat? It's kind of weird. All right. So the follow-up question, do the profiles save the tool chest info? Yes. That's that dependencies button. Mm -hmm. It will save tool chest, saves uh, custom line types. Um, what else does it save? Columns, custom columns. Custom columns. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things in that dependencies category that move over. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that is, right, so some tool sets show up here and whatnot. So if I change my profile, right, I have all of these available currently in my advanced. If I change it to flooring takeoff, I'm not going to see a lot of these, right? A lot of these have been disabled. New ones have been shown. And also my columns down here have changed. My UI has changed. Everything goes with it. That's right. Yes. It so will. and then, yeah, the follow-up is when you save the profile, Will it save the information back to the network file or does it save to the user's workstation? It's going to save profiles. to, yeah, Go it's going to save to the profile edition. I don't know what the users are going to have to do because I haven't worked on a server-based profile. So is it going to wait for them to close down and then when they open it, it pings back that, that server location for all that new deltas that have been added? I don't know. Um, that's something we can definitely figure out for you. But that would be the question, right? It's not going to, maybe it does. Actually, I'm not going to speak because I don't know. I, I think it does ping back when the software's reopened. I don't think it's a real-time update. Yeah, that would be my question. I don't know if the deltas are going to change while it's open or not. So We don't really work off of a server here. So we've got a, a VPN where we, we can reach them, but Locally is where we spend most of our time. Yep. Good question, though. Thanks for that, Mark. Any other yeah, questions? The, the other there? thing would be, hey, it didn't even reload. They would have to then write re-import it. Because uh -huh. there's no refresh button for these profiles. Right. It would be handy if there was. Though. All right. Um, What so you can also, yeah, what okay. you can also, I'm reading it. What you can also do, Mark, is attach it to a PDF anytime a tool set has been updated. And maybe we're using tool sets not efficiently because we shouldn't be updating them every single time we're doing an edit, right? Um, you can embed PDFs or embed those markups that you want to be transitioned over into the PDF by an attach. So you can file attach that tool set to the PDF. So then when the end user gets the PDF set, they can double click it and it will prompt them. If it's already downloaded, it'll prompt them, hey, do you want to update any of these? That's then when you can update them. That's a really neat trick. Um, it's also a great way to share custom tool sets with other folks who will maybe not be in your organization. So if you're doing something in like a studio session, for example, attach that file to something that's inside of your studio session, double click it, it works great. It's also how I tend to create custom tool sets for the iPad. Um, you, creating tool sets on the iPad is okay, but it's kind of slow and clunky. I'm much faster on the desktop. Get them all cranked out on the desktop, kick them over to session, pull up the iPad, double click on it, 
Yep. And they're ready to go. All right. So we talked about updates. We talked about licensing. We talked about drawings. And we talked about maintenance. We are flying through our topics today. Yes. Um, so let's show this gateway. Okay. So we are going to go into the gateway. So for those of us that didn't know what this was, there's a little treat involved here. Um, you do get access to this by logging into whatever your Bluebeam ID is. And auto prompt for all of my info. Mm -hmm. OK, so we are in here. Now I am in my own. And I get to pick which account I want to go to as I am part of this user account here. Now, what you have the ability to do is see your gateway admins. So you can actually give different Bluebeam IDs different access to this gateway area. And what this will allow you to do is then, then you can be more hands off. Hey, I deem this manager of being able to then give access to other people like to manage our drawing licenses. So you can manage drawing users in here as well. So you can go in and manage who's using it, right? There's zero, 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 but now here's our other one. And we can go and give access to specific uploaders. And you can also see how much they've uploaded to as well. So you can go through and see how much they've uploaded as well. This one's been deactivated, deactivated. It looks like so they're not drawing uploaders. So I should probably... Oh, locked up. I was wondering if that was going to happen today. Let's Reactivate my good old buddy here, Jason. Am I you back? You're back. back. OK. Back. Um, it's because I'm using the internet. Great. Good old throttle. Um, but I reactivated now Jason Arley because he didn't have any as well. So you can see who are uploaders. Well, that's weird. It has both you here and there. That's weird. But OK. So you can go through and add new uploaders if you wanted to. This is for the drawings area, and you have to be added as an uploader in order for you to upload documents. Am I still talking good? Yep. OK. Sounds good. Next one is your license portal. So you can go to your licenses and see which ones are available. So I can see which ones I have here available, who's using what. This is also where you can revoke people. So let's say you had a dead computer and you couldn't get access to the computer, you couldn't turn it on. How can I take the license off that computer and someone else use it? You will have that ability through here because you can go through and revoke specific users by saying revoke and that pulls their license off of that desktop or laptop that is being used with it. You also get a 5% overage of downloads when you have the enterprise licensing structure. So if you had a little bit of overage because someone's going out to the field and they needed to quickly download it onto their Surface Pro, can they do that? Yes, you can, even though we're using all of our licenses because you get a 5% overage. Then when you get back into the office, you can pull it off of whatever desktop it was being utilized for. Mm -hmm. Thanks for thanks for coming, Mark. He's headed off to see a presentation on our different webinar we've got going on for MEP. Nice. Um, so yeah, this gateway is super handy. And this is comes up with, especially with larger firms, you know, turnover is a real thing. You know, it happens to us here at ATG as well. People move on. Let's go take a look at their licenses. Maybe I want to, maybe someone's going on vacation for a month and I want to take away their license and give it to somebody else for a while. This gateway works perfect for that. Yep. Any other questions out there? Got crickets. Nobody wants coffee, huh? All right. <laughs> By default, Mark gets the only one since he is the only one asking. There we go. All right. So we've showed the gateway, and I just got an email said telling me that, hey, I'm now a drawings uploader. So when you made that change, it did notify me to let me know. Um, it, which is pretty cool. And it tells me you can now upload drawings and manage distribution to the field in Bluebeam Drawings. In order to upload from existing studio projects, you need to have full control permission for that project. Mm. So that's an important thing. When we talk about permissions a lot when it comes to studio, because you have that ability to limit um, what people can do, if that's your choice, or give them full access to everything as well. So that full control is a big part of being able to upload things. 
Correct. Oh, can I describe what you're doing here? I'm going in to show permissions as you talk through it, just okay. to show. Yeah. So Michael's signing into his studio account. Um, again, you need to be a studio, you need to have a studio account in order to use it, which is a free thing. This doesn't cost extra from your license. Yep, it's just your Bluebeam ID is what it's called. So from here, you can go to your permissions like Jason was talking about in terms of what you have set access rights to for specific users. So from here, you have your permissions and then you also have your folder set permissions. Can they read, write, delete as well? Now go back to that permissions tab. Full control is set to deny. <clears throat> so now since Michael's the admin of this, is the only one who will have access to upload up to drawings. So the other attendees can't do anything unless he changes his full control to allow. And, and you don't have to let all attendees do it. You can do your groups. So if you have groups, you can say specific groups like my director should have access to uploading, right? Um, I could select them and then they can be the only full control uploaders for it too. Good stuff. Anyone struggling or have any questions about their review workflow? This is a time to ask, um, creating custom tool sets. How do we create custom line styles? Any questions pertaining to review? Um, if not, we will keep walking through some stuff. Pretty quiet out there. All right, I got a question. Or okay. let's just say I'm going to come up with a question. Um, so you're already in studio, mm -hmm. and you you've got those icons at the top. So one studio projects, one studio sessions. Um, on your studio projects that you have open now, you have file share, and there's a little carrot, little icon, chevron thing next to that. What does that? Uh, this one or down below? Well, kind of both. So why? Why are some of those pending? And why is it? So these are what I have checked out. So there's a sub area of what you currently have checked out and what are the issues? Since I'm the owner, I get things that also have issues, right? Like this one has a specific set of issues, which is a confl uh, conflict because .bex files don't work in here because it doesn't have all the files in here. Mm -hmm. You can upload a .bex file, which is a, um, set of documents that aren't living to, that aren't together in one combined document set but they are individual allowing you to open them up easier but visually representative in a complete set now in order for that to work in here though i needed to upload the pdfs first because they still work in a project but they should have been uploaded first and then my bex file created then there later after meaning dropped into here the other ones are telling me, hey, you have this checked out. OK, thank you for allowing me to know that I have these checked out. Now, how Studio Projects work, because it is like an FTP site, you can store PDFs, you can store .rvt files, .dwg files, Excel files. It's a check-in, <clears throat> check check-out basis for these PDF files. And that's how these work. And these are the ones that I have checked out so I can work on them as well. Very cool. he, now one of those has a has a um exclamation point on it. Did you yeah, that BEX, is that the one you just talked about? Yes. Okay. I talked about the reason why because I uploaded the BEX file first instead oh. of putting the PDFs there and then go. the dot BEX file, which is also proprietary to Bluebeam as well. Um, in terms of how they can create a completed set, even though the documents don't live in a combined set. I haven't tried uploading a set to a studio project before. Interesting. Yeah, I, I did that because, again, hey, what if I want all of them to still live separate, but I want them to be in the cloud? How can I do that? Right. Excellent. That's why I tried that. Such an amazing, amazing function. We've, we're working with a, we did this topic on our normal central time zone one a, a couple weeks ago. And if you, uh, 
didn't know, there's a ton of our old sessions on our YouTube channel yep. at ATG USA. And that has, you know, more of these walkthroughs where we've done sessions all about studio. We've done sessions all about markups and, and all sorts of things. So um, go check that out if you want to learn more uh, about what we do here at Morning Coffee Review and what we do here at ATG. There's a ton of free learning resources for you. I would love yes. to know the total count of hours of videos that we've got uploaded. I bet it's, you know, in the thousands, maybe. Mm, yeah. Mm, probably. I mean, the ones that we have here were an hour each, right? And then you multiply that by what we've already done. I bet you there's probably around at least 50 hours of Bluebeam content, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Easily. Plus, yeah, plus all of these, which were also some more hour long webinars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All sorts of good stuff out there. All right. Next question. Um, um, to do, do, let's see, go to, well, speaking of sets, you want to show sets? Yeah. So currently right now I have PDFs that don't live together. So if I go to my exercise docs, well, actually they're in here. I just want to, no, actually they're in here. So all of these PDFs here don't live together, right? They're not a combined PDF. They're all individual. Um, maybe a hypothetical reason to do this is I don't want to combine them in the first place or another one would be these files are too large. Um, even when I did the create from file, there's still too much metadata that review is trying to interpret. So they're rendering in a slower manner. Um, is there a way to speed that up? Yes, export them out individually, which you can do with one click of the button from thumbnails in your combined files. You can then right click and say export as separate individual PDFs, then they would be brought out like this or however you had them named. I did them by the sheet number, which had the metadata for it on the bookmarks. Um, but you have this data here now, which is all of these individual PDFs. I have my general, my electrical, I have some structural, I have some plumbing, I also have some architectural ones. And I wanted to combine these into one single set, but without them actually being combined. Uh, you can create a .bex file for that. That will be in a panel called sets. I'm going to change the profile because I like to have my panels on my left and on my right. And then my tool bar menu at the top gives me the good old um, design interface kind of reference. But you have sets, which looks like a bunch of pieces of paper stacked together. Um, if you can't see this panel, you can always right click in an open area, go to show and go down to your panel or sets, sorry. <laughs> From there, you can activate it and it'll populate or Alt plus two. Once you click that, you then have the panel open up and you can go to the sets drop down and say new set or open an existing set. You can say new set and it says, hey, sets allow you to view a collection of individual sheets as they are single documents. You can apply tags to easily organize documents and let's go through that process. So from here, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna grab all of my items here under my documents here. Let me go to my, that's where they are. And remember, these were all the ones that live individually and I want them to be brought together. So I'm adding all of these PDFs. You can also set up options on how it's going to organize this data. And we don't know that yet what it's gonna look like, but I do. So from here, you could say, hey, how are you going to sort your files by file name and page label? Yes, because that file name here already set up for that instance. And then you also have categories. How is it gonna organize your categories for it? I did auto categories. You could do manual if you wanted to, and you can organize by file name or sheet number. You can also set up any tags, but the tags is that it's going to go off of is the sheet name and sheet number for this instances. Then I'm gonna go through and I'm just going to run this, but you have some additional options like copy markups to the newly added revisions. So if there's any revisions in here, do you want to copy those markups over and add them 
Um, do you want to unflatten any of your markups if there was any one made? Because you can have revisions in here as well. So you can tap through different revisions to see them. And these are some of your set options that you have the ability to do that. Down here, so out of the options area, <clears throat> you also have the use relative path. So this is in terms of, hey, do these links work, right? Were the links exported? How are they going to work? Relative path is going to search for the actual name of the document versus the name of the folder where it was saved. Um, those are the adverse of no and yes for that one. And then show pass if you want to show the path of where the location was for the document itself. I'm just going to hit OK. Then it's going to say, hey, here's the tags that I've created for you, Michael. Are these OK? So the file name is here, page label, and that gives them from there the sheet name and the sheet number. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's organized my set in these tags here. So I have my electrical sets, my mechanical, plumbing, architectural, structural, and general. I can go through and click a PDF open. And guess what? Down here, it shows one of 21, even though they are individual ones in their tagged locations. But I can scroll through and click on the next one that I was supposed to open up and go and see what's happening in that PDF. Yes, you can still mark up in here. You still have all of your markup capabilities if you have a license of review. Um, again, this is an easier manner of viewing and creating documents. Um, I guess viewing documents and marking up, right? Vision process so that you can load PDFs quicker or if they weren't always supposed to be together anyways, this is another way instead of having two tabs open, they're organized in a complete set as you can click through. Super handy way to speed things up and really makes life easy. I agree. Anything else to add on that note, Jason? No, it's just, as you mentioned, it's a, speed is a big thing here, right? Review works pretty good, especially if you're on a, a, you know, a decent computer. But once you start adding more sheets, especially with these full-size sheets, you will notice a little bit of a decrease in performance. But by or using sets instead of combining them all into one, it does seem to be noticeably quicker. And, All right. And also on that token, hey, um, client asked me, hey, Michael, you know, I'm having a hard time loading PDFs. They're rendering slow because I'm over here in this thumbnails panel and I can see them and they're loading very slow. What's what's one thing I can do right off the bat to kind of figure and troubleshoot this myself? I always recommend going to document and document properties and seeing where the document was created and what version of PDF producer was it also written in? because they do get enhanced in a better method. And from here, this is okay, 2018, maybe I'd prefer the 21 that just came out, right? <laughs> right? So what you can do is recreate your file as a Bluebeam written PDF. Now, Bluebeam review does follow the ISO standard, which is the International Standard Organization for coding PDFs. Now, if another viewer or PDF was written in a different type of standard, you wouldn't be able to open it up in review. Same thing for Adobe folks. If they weren't following the ISO standard and they tried opening it up in Adobe, it wouldn't open up. They both follow this ISO standard. And hey, if they weren't following the ISO standard or maybe they were, but they're still coding these more as GIFs and GIFs, which is huge metadata associated to your viewports, how can I rewrite it as a Bluebeam written PDF? which I would do anyways if I did this and I didn't see this. I would go file, then create from file. So file and down to the create from. And this is where you're going to rewrite the already existing PDFs. So I can go to my existing documents here. I can go to my um, sheets. And I can just create this as a Bluebeam written PDF. All I have to do is hit open. And then it's going to say, hey, where should I save it? Because I'm going to rewrite it. And I usually would do it over itself. Or if you want to have a backup, that's completely fine as well. And you can save it as something different. And it's going to be a new Bluebeam written PDF with the new writer of Bluebeam one for that. Mm, side note, <clears throat> speaking of file sizes, excuse me. I tried this the other day, and my file size went from like 5 megs to 20 megs. Is there a way that I can uh, change my file size if it gets too big? You can reduce file size. Just remember that it does 
reduce the DPI of the documents. Um, so it kind of is a give and take for vector. It's not that bad, but for raster, it's definitely um, a horrible choice because it, you can barely see it. But you can actually reduce the file size under document. You have reduced file size here. And what this will do is reduce the quality. And this is a drag bar of what you're reducing the quality by. Just <clears throat> remember that the image is going to be reduced. So the image being raster is an imaged PDF versus vector, which is vector data. So just be aware of that. And this is what it's going to do when you're using this slide bar. And this is gonna compress it versus the quality. So quality over here saying higher quality versus lower compression, compression over here. And then you have, where's it going to go to? You can replace it. You can add a file prefix or a suffix allowing you to go through and directly do that as well. Then you can hit save and you can be done. Pretty cool. All right, well, I see no more questions in the Q&A box and the chat is quiet. So we've covered a whole bunch of things today. We've gone down a couple different uh, topics. We've, we've talked about Gateway and Studio and, and all sorts of things. So um, these morning coffee review sessions are all about you, the community. So if there's no questions, we got nothing else to talk about currently. So um, what do you think? We'll just wrap this one up a couple minutes early, let you have, back uh left what's left of your day thanks for joining us um please tune in on tuesdays when we normally have uh these sessions at 8 30 central time if not we have this once a month during this time where you can ask any questions again pertaining to anything review um even if you're like hey mike i want an overview of what re review does we can do that as well again this is all about you the community um, we're here to support you all and any questions you have and also maybe learn something new ourselves. At the end, there's also a Q&A area. So if you have any topics you would like us to cover in future episodes, please leave that in the comments in your, I guess it's a review in the end or Q&A. Um, but, but please answer those. Um, we don't, we can't be better in what we're doing unless we get some review and some more um, suggestions on how we could better this. But again, this is all about you, the community, and I'll leave it after you, Jason. All right. Well, with that, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on a Tuesday. Yep, sounds great. Thank you all.